world leaders condemning North Korea this morning for firing off four ballistic missiles into Japanese waters overnight. The launch coming just days after North Korea threatened to retaliate over joint military drills between the U.S. and South Korea. Joining us right now is former Florida Congressman Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Maria. What, what is North Korea doing uh, and should the U.S. respond? Well, the U.S. will have to respond eventually, and North Korea is continuing to play the same insidious game it has been playing since 1995 when I was stationed on the peninsula along the DMZ as a young Army major. North Korea wants to continue to leverage these threats and their belligerent actions to make sure they continue to be supported. It's a kind of a high-stakes uh, extortion game that North Korea plays. But the key and important thing you have to understand is that North Korea has a very strong client uh, uh, granddaddy in, uh, in China that is making sure that they can stay uh, protected somewhat and we have to start looking at how we can bring pressure against China. And furthermore, what you have to be very concerned about is the collusion between Iran and North Korea with the exchange of missile technology to include nuclear technology. And of course, when you talk about violating UN resolutions, the real tough thing is that on the Security Council you have Russia and China to both sit there and they're not going to be casting votes to do anything, I think, against North Korea. Yeah, but has something changed with regard to North Korea? I I mean, Dagan, two weeks ago you have the, the head of North Korea basically murdering his, his, his brother. Uh, people feel that that was a real window and an indicator that something has gone even more awry than we expected in North Korea. Now these missiles being fired. Has something changed? Is there massive disruption going on and do we need to pay closer attention to this? I, I, the colonel can dismiss what I'm about to say. <laughs> what has changed is there's a new president in the United States yeah. okay. and that it's a and Colonel, do you agree with that? That it's a test yeah. of our, our metal. It's a test of our will. It's a test of our strength after eight years of a feckless administration that really didn't do anything about North Korea. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's one of the key things about tra presidential transitions is that you're going to have those despots and dictators and autocrats who are going to test you immediately, and that's what we see, we see happening right now. And remember that it was back, I believe, in 1996 when it was President Bill Clinton who went into a, a nuclear agreement with North Korea, and you can look at the speech that he gave and, of course, the speech that President Obama gave with his Iranian nuclear agreement, and there are very, uh, a lot of similarities that are there. And so we have to be concerned about that. At some point, time, we're going to have to work with our allies in the region, being South Korea and also Japan, and we may have to start intercepting these missiles to send a clear message to North Korea. We're not going to allow these threats to continue. Um, Lieutenant Colonel West, great to have you with us. Three years ago, President Obama ordered enhanced or increased cyber hacking of this missile program uh, as some sort of retaliation to the testing on, on the side of North Korea. Now, while I do think ultimately his policies undermined us geopolitically, both in Russia and China, allowing them to have larger domination over their sphere of influence, uh, were things like the cyber increased cyber uh, um, focused approach uh, helpful at all in your opinion to undermining the missile program well i just look at the results the missile program has continued on and as a matter of fact as we have said it is uh, increased when you have the Prime Minister of Japan here with our new president, President Trump, and they're having a, a dinner meeting, and the next thing you know, North Korea is shooting off a ballistic missile. That tells me that our cyber warfare efforts have not been successful. We play mostly defense when it comes to the realm of cyber uh, warfare. We're not going on offense, much the same as you saw with the Stuxnet virus that uh, went to undermine the Iranian uh, nuclear program. So I think that we have to increase those efforts. Yeah, I think that you make a great point. In fact, President Obama's former defense secretary, Leon Panetta was out on the Sunday shows this weekend weighing in on this very topic. Listen to this. I've always felt that uh, cyber is uh, it's here to stay. It's one of the weapons uh, that we have to, to deal with. Uh, and we have to be smart enough to use it uh, not only defensively, but offensively as well. And uh, I think, uh, you know, the stories you're seeing indicate that uh, the United States is on the cutting edge of that kind of technology. Is that a viable approach? Is that the way we should be approaching North Korea and this threat? Yeah, I think we absolutely have to. When you look at the United States Cyber Command and the respective services that have their cyber commands, we have to see this as a combatant command, and that's one of the issues that you have going on 
right now in the uh, National Security Agency and other agencies whether we should break off cyber to be its own uh, combatant command, just the same as Pacific Command or Central Command or others, because we have to start looking at using this new realm, this new platform. North Korea has done it very successfully, and other countries are doing it, and we have to stop playing defense. Lieutenant Colonel, this is Mitch Rochelle. One of the things that's interesting is the president has been pretty clear about not telegraphing what the strategy will be. But are there other tools that may be available beyond cyber to play a little bit more offense as opposed to defense or as opposed to doing nothing? Well, I think one of the most important things is the economic pressure that you can start to put on China. When North Korea sees that China is able to do what they're doing, building these uh, islands out there in the South China Sea and throughout the, that Pacific Rim area and putting <coughs> military fortifications on it, that's an emboldening action, not just for China, but also to North Korea. And I think that's another reason why you've seen a lot of the belligerent actions of North Korea step up here in the last uh, two to three years. Yeah, let, let's move on. I want to ask you about the border wall here because obviously mm -hmm. a major milestone for one of President Trump's key campaign promises, the Department of Homeland Security is going to be begin accepting bids for the construction of the border wall today. The project could hit a roadblock by the Senate, uh, but look at this new report from Axios. Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer formulating a plan to block funding for the wall. Uh, this is probably one of his leading promises to the American people that that border wall uh, and, and, and uh, Senator Schumer is pretty aggressive here saying they're going to block it. What's your take, Colonel? Well, I think uh, Senator Chuck Schumer should uh, read the report that just came out last week about the heinous crime of uh, two young ladies there in Suffolk County, New York, who were uh, beaten to death with baseball bats. And then furthermore, they were hacked to death by MS-13 gang members who were here illegally. As a matter of fact, one of those gang members had been deported and reentered this country. Wow. MS-13 is an El Salvador and Honduran-based uh, organization. So I think Chuck Schumer needs to understand that he's on the wrong side of this issue. The American people want to be safe. And we saw what happened uh, with the young man, Jal Jalil, uh, I, I forget his last name, that uh, President Trump recognized during his address last week, Tuesday. No, that was Jamal Shaw. By, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Shaw. He, he came on the show last week. And that was, yeah. that was so a we, heartbreaking we inter issue. interview, actually. His, his son was murdered, yeah. 17 years old. Um, but the other thing is, when you look back to, like, former President Bill Clinton, uh, Pelosi, Schumer, they all have said things in the past about every country needs borders. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we, we would be crazy to, uh, you know, offer citizenship to all of the uh, illegals living in this country right now. And all of a sudden, everything the president says, well, they push back on. Because the wall was the number one campaign promise, so it's become, almost become personal. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and what's well, forgotten? To under, un well, I just want to say, I understand this. Hadrian built a wall. The Chinese built a wall because of invasions, and the Vatican has a wall. So uh, let's get real. And Hillary Clinton <laughs> supported a wall when she was a senator from New York for a lot of the similar reasons that Lieutenant Colonel West just suggested, which is we have had major problems with illegal immigration here in New York. Well, let the, let the Democrats and the liberals keep complaining about the wall and keep moving further left because they're leaving the vast majority of American people behind they really and are. alienating those very voters. So do you, so do you think it's going to come back to bite them in 2018? Do you think people remember yeah, this, the obstructionism? Yes, absolutely. Because they, they're going to yeah. keep it up for not just two years, but four years. Mm -hmm. And it, we can talk about the of some of the legislative agenda, yeah, well, I particularly mean, with the wall, yes. Look, Colonel, they've got elections next year in 2018. Mm -hmm. So you wonder if they're going to lose more seats as a result of the way they're behaving now. Well, of course they will, and that's the uh, dirty little secret they don't want to talk about is the trend of seats they've lost in the House and the Senate, the gubernatorial uh, elections they lost, and also the state legislatures yeah. that they lost. If uh, the DNC chairman, uh, Mr. Perez and Keith Ellison, really believe that sanctuary cities and protecting criminal and legal aliens is something that the American people agree with, they're uh, totally out of touch and they're going to lose more seats in the midterm elections of 2018. But we need 3 to 4 percent GDP growth also. Yeah. All right. We'll be watching that. That's obviously <laughs> one of the priorities yeah. of this administration, growth. Yeah. Which we like. Get yeah. on it. We get on Colonel it. West, right. call all those Republicans who you still talk to and tell them to get on the tax reform. We're watching. I will, I will be up. I will be in Washington, D.C. in two weeks. So right. I will make sure I well, tell them, Well, you Dagan. have your marching orders from Dagan McDowell. So you will be watching. We'll send you yes, a bullhorn. You'll do with those marching orders, yeah. Colonel. Thank we'll you so much, you, sir. Yes, we'll send you a bullhorn <laughs> if that helps. Good to see you, sir. Colonel Allen West there. Coming up.